They are. Okay, here we go. My name is Randy LaRusso. I'm your presenter today. I am a retired uh, Florida educator of 42 years. I've been training teachers for the last um, probably almost 30 i uh, done some writing um, and I consult nationally on special education topics, of which one of my favorite is touch math. But today we're going to get into a little bit of discussion on um, some ideas for backwards counting. And before we do that, I just want to take a minute to talk about that working memory uh, because it is a big reason that we go ahead and teach our kids the support of backwards counting. So that working memory is that piece that, you know, when you're rushing around and you are super late and you can't find your keys and they're in your hand, that is where your working memory is. So when you get stressed, your working memory begins to deteriorate. What we want our students is to be able to have the supports and the background to be able to stay focused on solving math problems. So backwards counting is one of those things that we do. It builds familiarity with the entire number system, the basis for uh, subtraction, and it really builds awareness that addition and subtraction are related. You only need to be able to backwards count from 18. That's the maximum. So as we're working with our students, that's what we're looking to do. But as we begin um, doing that, we are starting at that low level, right? We've got our young kids and I'm gonna talk about both our younger kids and some age respectful activities for students who are in middle and high school, might have cognitive disabilities uh, or, or traumatic brain injury, and we need to go back and teach some of that. Let's start with some of those young children, and we want to make sure that they are beginning to backwards count from a very early time. Now, I live on the Space Coast of Florida, so when we go outside, to watch the rocket launches uh, with our phones of which they're doing the countdown at NASA and we're saying five, four, three, two, one. We're very excited about what that is and our students get very excited. So we do things at the early like um, Zoom, zoom, zoom. We'll be there very soon. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Get that. We want to increase those numbers, right? So we might start with three, we go to five, we're going to seven um, until we continue on to the fake and backward count from 18. Some of those early things that we might do is cut and paste. And on this one, I took my, if you look in uh, at my picture, I just took one of my number lines and I cut it up in pieces so that they could cut it out and they mix them all up and then cut and paste them down from the 10. So that's just a simple little activity that we can do. Something more age respectful is using a typical deck of cards. Um, we can count backwards from 10. We can make that Jack the 11, the Queen the 12, the King the 13. Um, the, and so we have all of these cards and our kids like to play games with cards. So there's a lot of opportunity to practice back to backward counting with a deck of cards and also teach them how to play a game, how to socialize, um, take turns, do all those things that sometimes our kids have problems um, doing. We also can use typical dominoes. Um, and one of the things that we would do is we can add the sum of the dominoes 
uh, and then use that sum to backwards count to connect up. So we can go as high as 12 on the dominoes. We also can get a hold of um, dominoes that don't have anything on them, right? So here we are with blank dominoes that we can write on. So those are some ideas for our older kids, as well as I'm a big fan of the abacus. I think that it does a lot of, supports a lot of different areas um, and backwards counting absolutely can be one of them because we can set up that tens, we can set up those eights and we are really teaching not only uh, that backwards counting, but we can get into other math skills as well. I'm a big fan of using board games, and this is absolutely a primary board game. But you know that you can get um, much more adult visual board games to play. Um, and we can use those, we can retrofit board games to create a backwards counting. And in this particular one, if you take a look at it, you can see. They put a paper clip here uh, so at that 18 so that we can backwards count from there. And again, then using those board games for more than just backward counting. Some of the ideas that um, I think about are using some of our, our own materials. Um, and when our students come in the classroom, we typically don't have a lot of students uh, in our room. So we can hand out a number when our students arrive in the morning, and we can do a lot of different activities based on their number um, and be backwards counting from there. Kim, I see your hand is raised. Um, was that intentional? You can unmute if it is. Okay, so we're going to go forward. With these materials, I might be lining up to go to lunch starting at nine. I can make higher number cards if I have more students in my classroom. But these cards can be used in a lot of different ways within your classroom. It can be a stand up, sit down game. You know, we like to give our kids a little shake up during the day, uh, get them stretching, get them moving a little bit. And so we can backwards count based on the number that they have. Uh, so we start at that 10 or that 12, wherever we are in our cards, and we ask them to do a pop up, stand up, sit down, like kind of a popcorn game, which is something that we can certainly do inside. I also like to engage other um, specialties in working with our students and focusing on a particular skill. So I like pl playground games. I also like to do it myself. We're bouncing a ball um, and our students can backwards count as they're bouncing this ball or they can be uh, sending it to the next person that has that number, right? So if I have it, I'm throwing it over to Kim. My number, I say nine. I throw it to Kim. Her job is to say eight, and she throws it to someone else who's going to do seven. So we can continue to mix up the students that we're passing our balls to because they're just going to say the next number down. Um, we can play hot potato in doing that, right? Uh, for those of you who remember that game, and that's an indoor or an outdoor game that we can play for my friends who are up in cold country. I like to think about um, even with our younger kids, um, hide and seek, whether it's the children in our own homes um, or whether we're playing out somewhere, playing hide and seek and counting back from that number whatever number it is that we're starting. My granddaughter is um, almost five years old 
And we are back when counting from 10. And so that's what we do when she wants to play hide and seek. We didn't start there when she was three and we were playing hide and go seek. Then we were doing five. So it is that 10, nine, eight, right down to ready or not, here I come. We also um, can look at it from playing hopscotch or jump rope as we're turning that. We're going to count backwards instead of forwards. So there's lots of different playground opportunities to be teaching it. For my older kids, I really like the concept of um, scavenger hunts, whether it's in the classroom or not. And so I'm going to go ahead and create the numbers maybe on a rock or on a piece of paper that's folded uh, and have my clue of where the next number can be found uh, uh, on the reverse side of it. So if I am starting with 18, I am going to have a clue on the back side of 18 of where they can find the next number down. What's the next number down? The group's going to tell me it's 17, and they're going to use that uh, those directions for a scavenger hunt to find their 17. So everybody gets to participate. Uh, and we're, again, doing more than one thing at a time. We're up, we're moving. We're also learning how to use different clues. Um, so we've got all of that language involved as well. And, um, you know, I'm really all about getting, as I said, other um, specialties involved. So maybe we can get our PE teacher involved and ask them to be backwards counting. The um, parachute is a great way to backwards count, but I'm sure that there's lots of ways that your PE teacher would also have ideas about things that they could do. So beyond just using our number line, there's lots of different ways to participate, to get backwards counting involved, and to do it every single day. We want to make sure that our students at least once a day have an opportunity, even if it's rote counting in your classroom, um, at some point in the day that they would have that opportunity. So I thank you for being with us today. Um, and I am looking forward to sharing some conversation with my guests that are with me today and what their ideas might be.